All right, people, the earth has moved, and we have pushed all our chips into the middle of the table, so I got to get on and talk about it. Just came down the pipe this morning. I, I, this wasn't even on my radar late last night. I was up late last night, and this wasn't even on my radar. I wasn't really thinking about it. Really, I, I really should have been because I kind of knew what we were looking for this free agency period, and I kind of knew what we would need, and I kind of knew the layout of our team. But this wasn't on my radar. And now it's done. It's done a few hours after I saw the first inclination that it could happen. Um, Percy Harvin has been traded from the Minnesota Vikings to the Seattle Seahawks. And um, this is the part where we push all our chips in the middle of the table and try to load up for the one-year or two-year window of competing for championships. Maybe. I mean, obviously, you know, stuff changes, but... This is us making our big move. We've been patiently, slowly building up this team, and now we've decided to make the big move. Percy Harvin comes to the Seattle Seahawks. He was having some contract concerns with Minnesota, and now he's going to come here. Presumably, we're going to pay him. So I got to give my thoughts one second here. Um, first of all, I'll discuss the trade itself. We gave up our first round pick and our seventh round pick this year. And we gave up a mid-round pick, probably third or fourth round, next year. Now that's quite a bit, but I don't really mind giving up the picks. For one, you know, we're looking at our first rounder. And this year, in my opinion, we should have used our first round pick on either a defensive lineman, probably a defensive tackle, or a wide receiver. Well, we just used our first round pick on a wide receiver, and he's somebody who is proven to be an excellent NFL player, so I got no problem with that. <clears throat> the um, the seventh round pick we gave up this year, you know, seventh round pick, it's, it's nothing. I mean, odds are, if you really wanted somebody in the seventh round, he's probably going to be there for unrestricted free agency, undrafted free agency, rather. So I don't care about that at all, and the mid-round pick next year, that's that's just basically a tax, I think, in my... I, I, I view that as a tax because we're getting a sure thing rather than an unproven rookie. So I got no problem giving up those picks. There's a late first... They're late picks in all likelihood. We know the first round and seventh round are, pick, are late picks. So I don't mind giving up the picks at all. My concern is the money. Now... I've been looking this over for a little while now, and even before this trade happened, this was something that was on my mind. The finances of this situation is going to make it very hard for us to keep this team together. And with this new addition, it's going to become even harder. Now, I already went through the list <coughs> a few videos ago, and there's nobody who's a free agent this offseason that's really worth a crap. I mean, there might be one or two players, but even them, it's like you could let them all go and you're not going to lose anything. But next offseason, a year from now, we got Doug Baldwin shaking free, Yakamini shaking free, Anthony McCoy is a free agent, Brandon Brown is a free agent, Paul McQuiston's a free agent, um, and now, you know, Percy Harvin's going to be a free agent, but we're going to obviously re, uh, probably re-up him well before then. Uh, Michael Robinson, Golden Tate, Walter Thurman, Cam Chancellor, John... Actually, I think that's it. Okay, John Moffat shakes free the year after that, so that's not even on the radar right now. But those, all those players I just listed are players who get significant playing time on this team as, in most cases, starters, and they're all going to be free agents next year. So... When you look at our cap situation, we have a lot of cap room. There are a couple teams that have more, but we have some of the most cap room in the league. But that's going to dry up very quickly when you look at all these quality players that we're going to be looking to extend in next year. And then, you know, you have guys like Richard Sherman, who is a free agent in two years, but he's getting paid a piddling salary. He might go, well, you know, I, I need to be extended now. I'm tired of making peanuts for, you know, you know, for my high level of play. So my concern is when we extend Percy Harvin to his big, whatever his contract is going to be, because he's looking for Calvin Johnson money. Now, he's not going to get it, and we all know Percy Harvin is not worth Calvin Johnson money. He's not, may not even be worth half that. You know, 
I think Percy Harvin's a tremendous talent, but he's had zero thousand yard seasons. That that's just a fact. He's had zero thousand yard receiving seasons. Now he would have had a thousand yard season last year if he didn't get hurt, but those are just the facts. But when we give him his contract, which will be significant, he will probably want to get paid more than um, Sidney Rice, and Sidney Rice is making a pretty penny. It's going to be a problem. We're going to have a um, issue on our hands because Sidney Rice makes about eight million a year. Percy Harvin's probably going to want to make more than that, and I don't see how we could give him less than that. So the money concerns me a lot because a year from now, there's going to be a small amount of money to go around to some players who are due a raise. Guys like Brandon Browner and Richard Sherman and Cam Chancellor, they make nothing right now, and they've deserved a big payday, and we're not going to be able to give that big payday to all these players. So basically... We put ourselves in a situation where we have, at most, a three-year window to really go compete for a Super Bowl. Unless we can <clears throat> reload consistently with premier talent every single offseason. And I have a lot of faith in this front office, but you never know when you're going to come up with a couple of lemons. I mean, you know, the Patriots come up with lemons sometimes. Like, they, they have a hard time finding good secondary players, and it seems like every year that's part of their undoing. You know, um... The best front offices out there still dig up some lemons sometimes, and they don't get the players they need to succeed. So, beyond that, uh, Percy Harvin, he's a great player. In my opinion, last year, before he got hurt, actually over the first about half of the season, he was arguably one of the MVP candidates among non-quarterbacks. You know, he was up there. He was um, contributing mightily to an overachieving Vikings team and helping out a young and inexperienced quarterback. Um, he's a immediate upgrade to our wide receiver core. He might be the best wide receiver on our team already now. He gives up, he takes us from an average to below average wide receiver core to an above average to good one. Now we have, you know, Sidney Rice, Golden Tate, Percy Harvin, and Doug Baldwin. That's four receivers I trust completely to do their jobs. Up, um, and, you know, if there's an injury or even two injuries in there, um, I have faith there's still going to be enough in that on that depth chart to get the job done at wide receiver. And I think it represents a significant improvement um, because this is a passing league. That's one thing I want to stress here. I do have some concerns about this trade, but this is a passing league. You win by passing the ball a lot. And... We have a we had a mediocre to sub mediocre wide receiver core. There are probably twenty wide receiver cores out there that were better than ours before this Percy Harvin trade. So to me, we have now become a team that is much more deadly through the air and thus more likely to succeed in this league. I mean, we have a great rushing attack. Of Marshawn Lynch is getting older. Mild concern over here. Uh, doing you know doing my Marco Rubio. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a, um, exciting to have a playmaker of his caliber. Uh, as a return man, I don't really care. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with what Leon Washington is doing as a kick and punt returner, but as a receiver, he's going to add a whole new dimension to this offense. And as good as Russell Wilson's rookie season was, and as good as I expect he will be next year, he had one 300 yard passing game last year and it was in the playoffs, the Atlanta game when we were frankly frantically trying to come back the entire second half and pretty much barely ran the ball. So, I mean, it was a legitimate 300-yard passing game. But still, I mean, we're looking at a quarterback who had barely like 3,000 passing yards last year. So this was a needed upgrade to our wide receiver core, I think. I thought we were just going to hope Sidney Rice was going to step his game up this season, maybe Golden Tate as well. But we've decided to go outside the organization to bring somebody in. He's a proven, excellent player. Um, I fully anticipate that if he's healthy, he'll have a 1,000-yard season. But the scary thing is, there's no going back now. We, were, we had been built up as a team very patiently. We were built up using low-round draft picks and undrafted free agents and players that nobody else wanted, signing them to cheap contracts and having them come in and overachieve many times over. And now... That formula has changed. We have gone out and gotten a proven star 
and are going to pay him a lot of money. So we'll see what the contract ends up being. Um, the draft has obviously gotten a little less interesting for me, but I, I, I know this front office is capable of using their later round picks to, for good things. So um, it's exciting right now. Um, I like. Um, I, I think I like the move. There are some real concerns I have because I think it'll really make it hard for us to keep our players here in a year and two years down the road. You know, Earl Thomas is another guy who could uh, suddenly just demand an extension because he's underpaid right now, and he's a guy we absolutely cannot lose. But we're going all in, and um, give me your thoughts. Um, I'm excited to have a elite playmaker on our offense now, and uh, I'm expecting big things from him and Russell Wilson this season. But uh, let me know what you think. I wasn't anticipating this much excitement, and looks like we went out and got some excitement. So. Um, there you go.